Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. My name is Ahmed. Pleasure to meet you. Okay, welcome to Play by Play Podcast. We're just trying to get to know you, get to know you better, get to know your journey and your career and your coaching. Great. Nice to meet you, Ahmed. Happy to talk uh, football with you guys. The first question we've got to ask you is, what kick-started your career in coaching or and your career in football? How did football start for you from a young age and growing up? And what inspired you to transition from being a player to a coach? Yeah, that's two quite uh, different stories, to be honest. Uh, for the, the playing started uh, already when I was four. Luckily, I had a father who who really enjoyed football. We watched football a lot at home, both Italian, Spanish, everything. So I was yeah, I was brought up with that. So I started to play from an early age. Uh, played until I was uh, yeah, eighteen, nineteen. Then I were called into the to the army, so that was an abrupt stop for uh, for playing. So, so uh, then then you know, guys, you you went one year in the army without touching a ball. So it ended after that year my playing career. But yeah, later on, then uh, it's quite quite randomly I I got into coaching. So I studied marketing first, and then um, worked a couple of years uh, with sales. Before I ended up in in Portugal, and uh, there my first uh, job was actually just to organize uh, training camps, uh, recruit teams for for different tournaments around uh, around Europe. Before uh, I got into another company, which was like next door in the same building, and it was a private mm-hmm. private football academy, uh, where I just wanted some help through the summer by. Uh, by organizing, uh, uh, what you say, like training programs for for youth players. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I did that for a uh, for a while, just being the, doing the communication with with uh, with parents of the players. But then it gradually went into receiving video, analyzing video to decide which one to take take in or not. And then uh, eventually I became a partner at that, uh, uh, at that academy, which meant that I, I had responsibility for uh, yeah, a region in, in, uh, in a part of uh, Norway where we recruited from. So uh, this was uh, during COVID. And so what happened was that I, uh, we couldn't operate uh, anymore from Portugal, so I took my part uh, of the company and arranged training camps in Norway instead of Portugal, where we normally would have have them. And um, yeah, to, it was it was uh, it was really run because uh, what what the concept of these training camps were were to fly in uh, coaches from from Portugal, so mainly from Sporting Lisbon. Uh, so that's what I did. We had a training com- camp in. Um, in Olesund and then in Molde. So I flew in a couple of uh, coaches from uh, from Portugal, experienced coaches from the youth system in, in sporting. And uh, they demanded just a couple of things, just a place to stay, uh, just to make sure the food was in order, and also an assistant coach through the camps. So I thought then, okay, could save some money here. So I'll just put myself in as, as an assistant coach. I know, know something I can help out with with uh, with organi- organizing and and uh, one of the ta- tasks were also translating to the to the kids from English into Norwegian. So I, think, yeah, I can help out with that and some, uh, save some money for for the project. Yeah. And there's where that's exactly where it started. It was uh, fantastic to work with, uh, with those guys, and I remember just being really inspired and just going into it, just being helping out with the translation, moving some cones around. But yeah, it went just became much more in, you know, so, so uh, yeah, shortly after that, I got an opportunity at my local uh, club, which was a player from, uh, from a young age. So they needed uh, an assistant coach for, uh, for the under 19s and, uh, and the women's team. So I accepted uh, that and did that, yeah, 
for a half year. So that was the start, uh, really. So uh, going from just trying it out in uh, in just uh, a way to save money for a, for a training camp project. So uh, went on to yeah becoming uh, uh, passionate later on work. I feel yeah, like amazing. your story is showing that this was your calling to be the football coach. Like I think that every person is just just aligned for you to be the coach. But, yeah, that's uh, uh, that's true. You know, it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for COVID. You know, because then we would stay back in Portugal, and then we will have all those um, uh, coaches that we need. So we would need any extra. So that was, um, yeah, it was uh, quite a coincidence. Yeah. But do you use any player experience in your coaching? Like, have you had good coaches or bad coaches? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. like, what's your what do you, what did you take from your playing experience to to the coaching experience? It's a good question because uh, my experience with with coaches myself is quite mixed, and you know uh, it's uh, it's a different place and a different time uh, now for, from when uh, when I was a player, and you know it's I I played grassroots football, uh, and then you have grassroots coaches, and some of them did very well, very well I think uh, it's, they made good sessions we had a lot of fun but. Also, for me, fun is uh, is also learning and, you know, developing and the development focus wasn't there, you know. Uh, so uh, for my playing time, I take, I t what I take from it is, yeah, I should, I should uh, train more myself. You have some talent, so you need to work on it also uh, in, in your spare time, not only in the session side. So I think first and foremost, I should do more of that individual training. And in terms of, of, of the coaches I had, you know, I never seen from I was four or five to I was 18, I never seen a tactics board used in any session. And I never, I can't remember uh, uh, any yeah, sort of systems, any sort of uh, tactical organization. We never, we never had it, you know. So, we played just randomly some good players that tried to to do things you know and the sessions was more about having fun and I, I had a lot of fun i have to say but it wasn't a good environment for for development so that is something i looked back at and thought yeah we uh, that's not the case where i am now you know it's it's a bit diff bit of a different demand in the club in the club i'm in now so so that's a big one and you know the way uh, that these coaches uh, coached it was by reinforcing by shouting you know so if you a good example from, from one I one coach had uh, for many years you know not quite uh, into the yeah the short passes and you know the, the intricate play and uh, what we would consider now as attractive football it was yeah defensive like route one and I, I remember one of the things I remember most is that when the defender wins the ball, he clears it, he throws it. Then you will hear from the sidelines, ah, perfect, great, fantastic. <laughs> so that's what we heard. It. If you pass the man past two people, no, nah, nothing. Mm. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, 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 I try to adapt quite a different style. And I think in my nature, I, I'm different in the way that I coach. So, yeah, the, the conclusion of this is that I tried to try to reinforce the importance of individual training. I tried to uh, make sure that uh, when we're training organized as a team, they're focused uh, on the task and make sure that they know what we're trying to develop here. And that's every set of, uh, of the training, uh, training session is towards the game, you know. Yeah. And, of course, also telling them uh, that they're doing good when they... Uh, they pass well and they do individual uh, good things, you know, so not only when they clear the ball uh, out of the line. Yeah. Wow, that's such an eye-opener because me, me and Patrick thought the game is not developing as much as it should do the last 10 years. Um, so, Mario, well, one question <clears throat> I have for you yep. is, like, in your opinion, do you feel the game has... Uh, kicked out a lot of creativity, got a lot of freedom of play, a lot of... Because we've had um, ex-pro players who are street footballers or ex-pro players who are 
they've become from a goal scorer to saying now nah, actually now I've kind of drifted more to the wing, more to a mm. false nine number ten. But mm. now there's not a an out and out true number nine like back in the day, Van Nistelrooy, um, Van Basten, all these top front players. That, uh, why do you think there's a lack of creativity uh, uh, in the uh, Championship League One in Norway Premier League, wherever it may be? What, what's your thought process behind that? Um, how can the game change from a coaching point of view in order to implement that again? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's an important question, I think. And actually, that was what happened to me as a player as well. You get moved around, and and uh, yeah, you don't you you you're not encouraged to play to your strengths if you are a creative player or offensive player in a, a lot of senses but for, for us now at uh, at Lean where I'm coaching it's uh, it's it's quite different I think and I, but I have I have observed uh, what you're saying it's it's more of a, a systematical approach where you are defined into zones you're limited to uh, to quite strict uh, uh, game plans but yeah, what what my experience is uh, is that if you have uh, technically gifted players uh, if you encourage them, then we'll give you give you more. And if you, if you if you're not that structured uh, to set a player to be in a, at a certain position at a certain time, you give them more freedom to think and, and use their creative brains, even from a young age. Then I think you'll get the best of them. It's it's our approach at Lean uh, uh, for sure, and I've seen it now. Not coaching for that many years, but I already managed to see it. That if you have talented players, creative players, you give them freedom. They will, for one, I think, help the team as best as they can. Uh, you, you, Of course, you have to put on, uh, in those defensive disciplines, of course, but they will always create something. And I've seen a lot of results going my way because we've had that type of players that had the freedom to try exceptional things and can pull it off at, at times. And you also will have players that enjoy more. And I think that's probably most important because if you try to restrict a player and, uh, and also especially from a young age, then I think that's, uh, that could be a motivation killer, you know. Uh, so they have to learn certain things. Of course, you need to be strict on them in the defensive part and they have to remember that in accordance to how the team wants to play. But if you in the offensive part of the of the um, of the game are still restricting them, then you're missing out as coach and as a team, and the mm -hmm. player is, is missing out as well. So, yeah, I think uh, I think maybe it's in some teams they are more restrictive. But yeah, I, I, my opinion, and I think my club's opinion, is that that's not uh, the right way to go about it. You mentioned that you put a big focus on individual improvement of a player, mm -hmm. but as a team, you also need to do good in the leagues. How do you ensure that you that the players get uh, better individually, but also as a team? Yeah, it's uh, a part of development uh, which we've had as a club uh, at Lyon because we went from I was there in 2021 uh, until now. They've taken uh, quite big steps in the senior department, which has dragged on uh, the youth department as well. So we went from pretty much being grassroots football my my first year and and also most of the second one. Now, uh, it's quite different. We have a lot of tools for individual development. So, so all of like uh, individual target setting, we have uh, regular meetings uh, one by one, going through video analysis, what needs to improve, what's good now. Uh, and also for, for uh, some of our players, they're connected to the, uh, what should we say, the regional teams uh, in... Which is uh, which are conducted by uh, the federation, you know. So, so they're playing at quite high level, so they get feedback from from them as well. But what we try to do is to use the tools we have, checking off, yeah, uh, where is this player now in terms of that ability, or is he lacking in in that? How is his strength? Is he injury prone? So, uh, and is there a risk of injury? So we try to use all those tools we have to to monitor uh, along the way. Then we are. Uh, have regular talks uh, one by one with uh, with the players to make sure that we are on the same wavelength of what needs to improve, what's good now, how to improve, 
so we have uh, a lot of video analysis and also, of course, reinforcement in uh, during the sessions and the, and the matches. It's, it's interesting how the games develop the last five yeah. years. Um, like, for it's example, like indiv individual yeah. analysis, team analysis, um, obviously the video, SNC, <laughs> everything. Like, what's the, let's say you've got an inspiring pro, uh, aspiring pro that wants to make it, he's 14, 15. Um, based on the players that you've scouted and the players that you've seen, both that had the talent but not the mindset, or they've got the mindset but not the talent, what was your advice for? A, a general advice for aspiring pros who are trying to make it in order to get scouted on what needs to be done. Yeah, you know, it's it's a bit of a, a cliche, but it, it comes down to to work, you know. Uh, and 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 of course there are um, there are luck involved as well. But as long as there is uh, a talent there, then the possibility the, they're always there because I've had uh, I've had a player this age for been. 14 years of age, uh, having his father and his grandfather even being professional players at a high level. So for him, you know, there will always be that sense of it's it's possible. And uh, for other ones, that is more that's more of um, uh, of players that's in the mix, you know, not standing out as much. Then they need to know it's possible. You know, they need to be told. Uh, it's possible because when you believe it, then you are more motivated to put down those uh, those hours of, uh, of training. So if you do that, you have the talent, you have the belief, and you have the uh, ability to work and uh, the hunger to work. Well, then, then you have, I think, what's the essential. And also, if you are interested and want to take part in the tactical part of the game, uh, how you work within a team, and you get that understanding and uh, got the ability to read the game. Uh, then you have, I think, uh, the essences of of, uh, of what what's needed to to go quite far. You know, you mentioned that in Lin you are having uh, one by one meetings with the players, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. I, we both, me and uh, Ahmed, feel like this is the part that is lacking in the senior football. Yeah. And uh, you, as a coach, how do you get to players to understand them a li little bit more? Like, what kind mm. of questions do you ask them to to get more information from them? Mm. Yeah, you know, it's uh, a big part of this, is, I think, is video analysis, you know. Watching together with the player, having them telling you what they are they are seeing. Mm. So there, from there, it's, it's possible to take a lot of uh, uh, conclusions because then you got an, get an insight to how they are thinking. And it's also a, a good source of asking the right questions, you know. Could you do something different here? What's the other options? And then you get to see them think. And that's, I think, is a, a, a powerful tool. And it's easier, I think, for them to understand uh, instead of just only talking to them or, or asking them. Because if you get the perspective of your decisions, then uh, I believe 100% that's a powerful tool uh, in order to, uh, to improve. It's interesting how all of your approach is thought provoking question or you get them to like think or you get them to like problem solve for themselves. And I feel like that's what a lot of coaches these days, especially in non league or semi professional or one one league below the professional league, whatever it may be, that's where it's like what a lot of managers lack. I'm, I'm interested, like, where did that come from, from you? Because it's not an, a normal thing to see a coach that is, is so detailed, so asking thought-provoking questions, so into um, looking after the players, so the players look after you, et cetera. So where did this man management skill come from? Nah, it's it's come from working uh, within a club that's... Uh that uh, has good uh, knowledgeable people in it and uh, which are uh, really really into developing coaches as well so from that you have the tools that you that you need 
so it's also based on my my perspective and view of things. Uh, I think uh, I, I I want I want them to, to the players to see uh, things by themselves. I'm not into that way of coaching, which is directive, which you tell them do this, do that. And sometimes you, you need that also, but. I think the learning is more powerful when they ident- when they identify uh, the improvement areas uh, themselves. So that's just uh, a part of how we're taught to coach uh, in the club I'm in now. But also, I think uh, it coincides with with my view of of the game and my view of uh, of development. What's the best part and the most challenging part of being a coach? Yeah, the best part is to see uh, that the things we do on the training sessions are transferred into a game and it works. You know, that's mm-hmm. uh, that's the best feeling and it works by, by winning. Even though we, we are in the youth system, we still like to, to win games. You know, it's, it brings motivation and it brings joy and it brings the team together. So, so, so that's the, that's the, that's the best, I think. Just seeing that the work that we do every every day is just yeah coming uh, coming into uh, to play during a game. So so that's what I en- enjoy the most. Uh, the most difficult. So it's a good question. So, uh, of course, it's a lot of work that goes into this, but that's it's difficult in the time in the sense of making time. It's not difficult because. You enjoy it, really. It can feel a bit overwhelming at times. Remember that I've also uh, got a full-time position in another company, so this is actually just part-time. So, so that could be, yeah, I would will, I will say that's the difficult part of it. But, yeah, you know, if you, if you enjoy it, then it's, it's really not that hard. What's next for you? What's your future ambitions? Mm-hmm. What, where do you see Marius in life? Five years time, ten years time. Do you feel like you're gonna try transition into more full time coaching? It would go for uh, the senior group, more of a twenty threes, older group. What's your vision? Yeah, you know, I, I've thought about this uh, actually, and and like too many years ahead, I can't, I can't say because uh, I I've already seen that things change quite fast, you know. So, uh, so for for the time being, I'm I'm quite happy with with the group that uh, I have now. I was also uh, now uh, just last week inducted into the um, UFAB license uh, course. So, yeah, in August I will I will attend that and uh, and hopefully uh, uh, manage to get my my BU license, which of course uh, opens doors as well um, for for possibilities. But yeah, I'm. I'm I'm quite happy now to just focus on 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 the group that I, which is a talented group. We play in the national division of Norway, which is the highest uh, division for for uh, for those set age groups. So that's that's a, that's a good challenge for me and I, I think. And um, and yeah, I've tried older age groups as well, all the way up to 19, as I said, the senior women's team for a short while, and uh, I feel quite motivated now to continue uh, maybe with with this group, but. As I said, you never know. Uh, things change uh, change fast. So, so yeah, if if I'm still at Lean in a couple of years' time, uh, coaching a, a team in the in the national series, I think that's that's quite a good arena as well. And do you have any mentors that you can ask for advice nowadays, or do you, or do you also have mentors that are uh, we see on TV like Guardiola, Klopp? Yeah, you know, uh, at the time I work closely with. Uh, yeah, we have the. He's my colleague uh, in the same team. His, his name is Dan Batra. He was a professional uh, uh, player. I think he played in Greece, top division in Sweden. Has has some year in Norway, and uh, and I don't think it was Leeds but yeah, uh, what's called Opus uh, now, and he's a really experienced. Uh, Experienced man, and he is a fantastic coach, and uh, he's done uh, done a great work with the group we had. Now he had them last year before uh, I came in, so now we work together this year. And the yeah, the work that he's done with that group is is amazing. So I I learn a lot from him, a lot. Uh, for now, it's it's where I learn the most by talking with him, working with him. 
so 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 that's yeah the main uh, main person I go to now for uh, advice and for learning and yeah in terms of the top managers uh, I just, I've all I've, I've looked at Mourinho you know I think he's uh, been an inspiration for for reasons that uh, it's just you see the way he managed to to get players to work uh, for him in a way that I think it's it is is not too many that have the ability to do so uh, and also for sure his football is not the most attractive but it's it's really it's really just uh, a solid uh, foundation that they were, he did especially with Chelsea and, and I think uh, with Inter as well so so he's been a bit of an inspiration other than that it's yeah, it's I try to yeah mostly uh, look to myself and to 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 go my own way not being too much influenced by one or the other but yeah that's yeah that's that's my perspective of it uh, at least yeah what the best quote and the best advice that you've ever had that you, that you kind of took on board in terms of for, for both in football and outside of football that um, made you who you are today? It's a good question. A bit difficult to, to answer because, yeah, I've not, not really been in that setting where I've gotten that uh, type of like life-changing advice, but uh, of course I've had a, a father which uh, which is uh, really into football as well. And yeah, he we we didn't talk too much about this when I was playing, but uh, as I've been older, he, he he's reflected a bit on what I could do different um, uh, as well uh, when I was a, a player. So. So that's uh, I think that's uh, resonated a bit with me. Is that yeah, you, you need to trust yourself, and um, that is I think looking at at that now uh, as a coach, it's it's fundamental. You have to trust your decisions and and your opinions. So if you're if you're going away from that, it becomes visible. You know, that's what that's what. Uh, makes you look insecure. So you always, I think, need to to trust your decisions. So of be open for, be open for, um, for input elsewhere. But the final decision as a coach, I think, it has to, yeah, come from from yourself. So that is, and otherwise, I, I always try to to think of yeah. Do you feel that it's funny, Patrick? Because remember what you sent me this morning. Not oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Not a coincidence. What was that? Uh, Patrick said, um, "The odds are already against you, so why would you d- distrust yourself? Basically, especially as a footballer, or you're trying to be the successful person, the one percent. The odds are already against you, so why do you need yourself and the odds both against you?" Yeah, it's uh, it's. Uh... It's something to think of, and you know what? I have uh, experienced uh, a lot of uh, this past year as uh, as a coach. Is that a lot of people want to influence? Of course, the players in a positive way. They want to have it uh, in 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 the way which suits them best. But of course, working with youth players, you also work with parents, mm. and they want an input. You have you know, all those uh, influences around you as well. So it makes it, I think, even more. Mm important to to yeah just trust yeah trust your um, experience and your own uh, instincts i know i know i know i'm sorry for breaking the podcast just one announcement okay check out our channels on instagram on tiktok on facebook play by play podcast we have uh, six minutes left uh, we would like to get as much knowledge as possible from you <laughs> so uh, p- please tell us how would you coach yourself when you could uh, go back in time and be be your own mentor, how would you yeah, walk yourself through the jo- journey? Fantastic question. Uh, first and foremost, I would say you have to do more outside of the organized uh, session. You need to work on your, on your body more. You need to do individual training. Make sure that the things that you think you're good at now continues to improve and work on your left foot because it's terrible. <laughs> you can never... <laughs> You can can never make it. I never focused on 
on the on on uh, on uh, improving my left foot. So 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 uh, so also going back to what we just talked about in terms of of the advice, then uh, then you need to trust yourself also a bit uh, because yeah, uh, a big struggle of mine was the way I played at that time and, and with the coaches where it wasn't uh, too popular. I was more of a of a, of a, of a creative player liked to have the ball at my feet, like to take on a, a defender, you know, and uh, most of the time that was, um, I was getting uh, yelled at for that. So, uh, so uh, yeah, it was, was something that killed my motivation a bit, but what I did wrong was I, I listened to them. So I shouldn't have done that. I should have just continued doing what I did best, not trying to, to change myself too much because at the end, I, I, I just went over as a, as a winger in a, in a team that played long balls. So what I did was more or less running up and down without the ball for, for 90 minutes was terrible. So I hate, at, at the time, I really hated playing uh, matches, you know. It uh, was, was not a good situation. But when I came into the training sessions, then we had no, we had no like like I mentioned earlier, no thing that we worked on. So we, uh, we had some drills and then we played um, two teams and then we can do whatever we want. So that I enjoyed. Then I could be myself, you know. So, so I, I would go back. Just yeah, make sure that you do uh, the work you need outside of the training sessions uh, yeah. to to improve yourself and yeah, and, and trust the way uh, that you want to uh, and that you like to play uh, play. So, so that w- would be the main uh, things for me. I think. Interesting. Like that's the thing. Like during the training session and during the game, you. You just touch the ball a few times, and like you will, you will not, you will not be a football player if you touch the ball a few times. Like it has to be minimum, like I don't know, two thousand touches a day. Uh, yeah, it was it's funny thinking uh, back, uh, back at now because yeah, we went up and down. We didn't want, we didn't use the the wing. We just got the ball from the back because we weren't we were that, that good of a team. So we were mostly on in a in a low block, and then. <laughs> Just kicking the balls as far ahead as you can when winning it. So then, as a winger, then you, you need to move on forward. And then you just get it back. And uh, what was really important is that yeah, you have to do the defensive uh, job as well. So if you weren't at the right place uh, at the back, then you get a hard time. And then it's the bench the next one. So yeah, it was not a good time uh, uh, for me. Uh, and I think it was not an environment that. I created too much uh, much joy around football, but yeah, I should yeah probably listen more to myself in terms of what, what uh, the way that I like to play, you know. So um, yeah, it's, it was difficult, but yeah, it's it's been a source of uh, of a lot of reflection now that I become became a coach and understand things in a different way. What's your purpose? Why? Uh, what's your yeah. your why? Like mm-hmm. the why you're doing what you're doing, basically. Uh, because, like I say, it, the 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 characteristic and the personality is a very rare trait that you see these days in the in the football coaching. And me and Patrick have said this before: the coaches that have those traits end up becoming the top of the top, like the Premier League coaches and stuff like that. Um. So, w- what triggered that for you to be the person the way you are? Yeah, I think now we, we're talking a lot about my prayer, my experiences as, uh, as a player and my past experiences. And uh, I think now the purpose uh, is the boys that I, I work with at the moment, uh, you know, to help them to make sure that they have uh, the possibilities that maybe I, I didn't take uh, or, or have. Uh, so so that, that drives me immensely now, uh, seeing them improving and seeing the team uh, improving as, as a whole. Uh, it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's a source of motivation and what's what's making that uh, work easy, you know, in terms of putting down the hours that's uh, that's needed. Because yeah, I've seen the the upside of of having success with with younger players, and uh, yeah, it's a source of of, of great joy, uh, not only for them but uh, for me as well. I, it's it's uh, it's what I've learned to be uh, the main. Uh, purpose of yeah of doing this work. That's amazing. It's been a pleasure, Marius. We learned a lot. Great, fantastic, guys! Thank you for uh, for the talk. Wow, that was an episode. 
If you want to see more, check out this one.